Today we're gonna to answer the top 10 questions asked by apparently you. We're going to type in our ball pythons on Google and see what autofill gives us. So we're gonna start from top to bottom answering these 10 questions as best as we can using my own knowledge and researching the actual topic itself. Number one question Googled, are ball pythons venomous? Now you might be watching this and think like, wow, really? Like, of course they're not venomous. The answer is no, but it kind of tells you everything you need to know. And I don't say this to be mean, but there is a lot of ignorance when it comes to reptiles. And ignorance literally just means not knowing. And people start to fill in the gap. It's a lot more common than you might think. But when you hear this question, don't ridicule them. Educate them. That actually leads us into the next one. Are ball pythons constrictors? And that is a yes. Venomous snakes are not. They just bite it typically, and then they just step back and wait for the venom to take its course. But constrictors, they bite and then wrap their prey. A common myth is that they're actually strangling their prey, which I'm sure that has happened with a bad rap occasionally, but what they're actually doing is stopping the heart of the rodent that they are eating. This is why they typically die fairly quickly, especially with a good catch and wrap. Our third question would be, are ball pythons good pets? Yes, I would agree. Of course, this is technically an opinionated piece, but they are the most popular pet snake. Any beginner pet video for reptiles is usually going to mention ball pythons. And there's a lot of good reasons for this. Ball pythons generally have a very calm disposition. They are slow, big and fat, so they are not very flighty. And they're very inclined to just kind of hang out with you. If you just wanted to handle them and maybe put them around your neck, they're inclined to kind of just stay in place. They make a very relaxed animal and it's a very good reptile as an ambassador to reptiles. What I mean by that is if someone is afraid or unsure how to feel about reptiles, bull pythons typically make a very good ambassador, especially when it comes to just the snake portion of it. So yes, I'd say they're very good pets, even though that is obviously very opinionated. And I am very, 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 what's the word? Bias. Bias. That's what I am. Are ball pythons nocturnal? Yes, although you might not know it if you keep a pet, they are generally going to be far more active at night. They are nocturnal in the wild. That is when they come out and they hunt. They typically spend the day hiding. On that, it's usually a good idea to keep a day-night cycle for your animal, whether you're keeping them in a tub or a tank. We talked about that briefly in a video where we discuss toxicity in the ball python community, but this just gives them an idea on when it is day and when it is night and this can simply be done with the flick of a light switch just turn the light on in the room they're going to be able to see the light coming in through the cracks through any of the holes that you've created this will tell them that it is day next up our fifth question are ball pythons dangerous and i cannot think of any situation that a ball python is dangerous in can they bite you yes they can and typically it is a joke <laughs> quite frankly can it hurt yeah, I've had one where I was pulling out their tray and they jumped up, bit my thumb and pulled down. Uh, that kind of sucked, but dangerous to me implies a threat of either death or serious injury of some sort. And no, they're not dangerous. In fact, I would say technically the most dangerous thing about a ball python would be it could carry salmonella poisoning but that's actually incredibly rare as is and if you're practicing proper hygiene I, i'm not super familiar with the way salmonella works but i believe it has something to do with what they eat and then you would then have to get salmonella by interacting with the fecal matter of the snake and then in some way ingesting a little bit of it maybe by touching something you kind of wipe your hands off don't think about it you do one of these a little bit later but again your snake would have to be sick and it's incredible incredibly, incredibly rare, and pet reptiles typically are not going to have it. Same thing with birds, by the way, because they can also carry salmonella, and they are actually reptiles, fun fact. Our sixth question, are ball pythons aggressive? No, I wouldn't say so. Defensive, they can be, but in general, they're very mild-mannered. It goes back to the number three question, are they good pets? The reason that they're good pets is that they typically are not aggressive or even defensive. I do have ones that are defensive. They do not want anything to do with me. They typically run from me, but aggression would imply that it is actively attempting to hurt me, that it wants to cause me harm. It does not. At the very most, it wants 
me to go away. So that word would now be defensive because it is defending itself and it is defending its home. That is incredibly uncommon. Anyways, so no, ball pythons are not aggressive. They're generally very timid, mild-mannered creatures that have a lot more personality than people give them credit for. Well, are ball pythons friendly is number seven. Kind of just answered this, but again, this is really just opinionated. It depends on whether you think that they're capable of the definition of friendly. I think they can become very familiar with you and very comfortable with you. Some ball pythons can even be very curious. And I would say that they might even more than tolerate your behavior. Most of them are just going to tolerate and realize this person, they like to hang on to me and they don't want to kill me. So I'm just going to let them do it. They're a warm body source, so I'll just hang on them. But can they be friendly? I do have some ball pythons. I'm thinking of one in particular named Anubis that has a very distinct personality. I also have my very first ball python named Gwen, who is very curious and very calm around me, lets me pet his head. We have another snake that I named King. We call him a puppy dog. He very calmly comes out. Sometimes he's in back there sleeping, just hanging out, but there's a good portion of time where he's just right there, just waiting to come out and say hello to you. Whether you want to define this as friendly or not, is I guess up to you. I would say in general, they're more tolerant, but they will be comfortable with you and they will hang out with you. So sometimes that's all we need in a friend, right? All right, one of my favorite ones because everybody likes to nail people when they say this and it's related to our number one, are ball pythons poisonous? You might think that we already answered this with our first question, are ball pythons venomous? Venomous and poisonous, same thing, right? Uh, no, and you'll hear this from a lot of people and some of them will try to nail you to the wall for it and try to be like, <laughs> actually, but venomous is when it bites you and you get sick or die. Poisonous is when you bite or eat it and then you die. So poison is something that's transferred by you trying to eat it or touch it. Venomous needs to be injected. So by the definition of poison, no, they do not have poisonous nature to them. But there are some snakes that are both venomous and poisonous for various reasons. I think Eastern hog noses are both poisonous and venomous. Neither one is likely to kill you to my knowledge. The venom of a hog nose is typically more like a bee sting level of venom. Painful, going to swell, but I don't believe that there's ever been a death from a hog nose bite that I can recall. But I believe it is due to to their diet that they are also technically poisonous. And part of their defense strategy is to let prey know this. They roll over, they excrete a musk, they show their belly off, and then they play dead to make themselves look very unappetizing. But they and some other snakes in the world are poisonous and venomous. And some are just poisonous, but most are not venomous, but some are. <laughs> I don't know how to explain that make it sound better so the important thing to know is don't touch it unless you know what it is and i would hope that you're not trying to eat snakes live anyways and if you are you're probably on a deserted island and if you're watching this video on a deserted island please let me know for our ninth one we're going to get into something that is debated are bull pythons arboreal now arboreal means that they climb trees basically or they will climb if you research it you will have people tell you that no they strictly stay on the ground and then you'll have people tell you that they are semi arboreal that they will do both and then you'll have people just say nope that makes them arboreal there's part of the world that they just hang out in bushes and eat birds all the time so that's not confusing at all right bull pythons are very adaptable but a bull python is not going to be found in the trees very often at all. Sometimes during the wet season, they will climb to escape flooded grounds. Not like very flooded, but it does flood out a lot of their tunnels and homes and such. Uh, so sometimes they do that and they wouldn't really climb a tree. They'd more or less just get in a bush. Bull pythons do have a very wide range, however. There are some of them that are located in basically what you would consider our version of the woods, so to speak. It's not like a tropical forest or anything like that, but it is a woodland. In these areas, they can, if they needed to, climb. But is that their typical stick? It is not. They are typically ground dwelling animals, but they are very, very adaptable. In your little perfect box that you've created, you might find your bull python hanging around on a stick every now and again. But in the wild, they are not typically seeking to climb. So I guess I would land in the somewhat semi arboreal. I, I have described them as semi arboreal before, but it just goes to show that not all answers are definitive 
leading into that for our final and 10th answer are ball pythons tropical i'm surprised desert isn't on here i hear about it a lot oh they're an african snake they must be on a desert right i don't know where people think that africa is just one big sand trap but it is not ball pythons are found in west sub-saharan africa this is countries like senegal mali guinea sierra leone liberia the ivory coast ghana there's a few others as well but in general they are found in very arid hot humid grasslands some bushes every now and again and very sparsely wooded areas let's just pick one of those countries let's just pick ghana that's one that they're found in quite often ghana's climate is a tropical and strongly influenced by the west africa monsoon winds so there's your answer is the bull python a tropical snake sure i guess so but it's not tropical rainforest in fact what i just said they kind of go into retreat mode when the monsoons come that's when they would maybe take refuge in bushes and such like that. They are not a desert snake by any means, but they are not from the rainforest. So creating an environment for them that is very oversaturated with water is not good for them at all and can result in a lot of issues. In fact, there's, I don't believe, much water at all, but it is humid though. Two different things there. If you like this video, you might be newer to ball pythons, and we made a video on how you should set up your ball python enclosure right here. If this like if this look like Strigender, Tragedic Tribuste, Tagara.